that there's just too little love. Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. Uh, I'm Seth Uresky. I'm James Wesley. Married to this one. Married to this clown. Welcome to Stars in the House. What up, everyone? We've been going since March. If you don't know, we've been doing these live streams, raising money for the Actress Fund. We pivoted to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund a couple weeks ago. We're going to have a head honcho here, a honcha, <laughs> to talk about it. And what else do I want to say? Um, oh, to donate. So right. let's start with the basics. So you donate at NAACP ldf.org slash stars keep, in the house. Keep telling people. Like, sure. got to find some. Okay, that's how we can keep track of the donations. And then you forward the receipt to stars in the house 2020 gmail.com. And then I'll forward some of those names to Vanessa Williams and she will read your names and she will save the best for last. Wow. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Um, but anyway, that's where you donate. NAACP ldf.org slash stars in the house. And we'll hear all about where your money is going with LDF because they're like the premier. You'll, you'll hear all about it. I don't want to spill anything. Anything else, James? Well, I was trying to look for something that was connected to our big announcement that happened today. Oh, but I, I saw. can't. Speaking of the Legal I Defense saw, Fund, um, so we had a big announcement of not one but two singles being re being released by Warner Music on Friday, and it's from Free to Be You and Me. So Sarah Bareilles is singing the first cover of Free to Be You and Me since 1972. And then we have Michael McElroy and the Broadway Inspirational Voices doing Sisters and Brothers. Sisters and Brothers. It, your head's going to come off when you hear both, both arrangements. They're Amazing. So and all of the funds being raised are going to the Legal Defense Fund. And it was to be Legal Defense Fund. And we're going to, so we're having a major special Friday night. Friday night. So yeah, so each time when, like some people thought maybe Seth had killed me. Or had had was like locking me in a garage. Oh, remember like, when like James was in here and I was like, he's working on a project. Yeah, slash. all these times I've been working on a project, it was it was this. Yeah. Um. Uh. It, it's been it's been wonderful, but we've got like an amazing show. Not just tonight. Tomorrow night we have a pride special. We're still working on. Yeah, we have a pride special. Um, and it is special and a surprise. We've got a few guests. We want to add it, add a few more. And then Friday night it's going to be Marlo Thomas here with us live. And then we've also got. Sarah Bareilles, Gloria Steinem, Harry Belafonte, Audrey McDonald. Uh, I know I'm missing people. Deborah Messing. Deborah Messing. Michael McElroy. Michael that? McElroy. No, I didn't. I mean, we've got a lot of, it's going to be a packed show and it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and then, the premiere, we just found out because we just got off the off a call with Marcus at Broadway Inspirational Voices and with Warner Music. And so the premiere video for Sisters and Brothers is going to be here on Stars in the House Friday night. And they're going to play Free to Be You and Me premiering on Hits 1 at Sirius XM Friday morning. That's right. And also, don't just listen to it and love it. Buy it because all the money is going to NAACP LDF. Also, why do I look like I'm wearing a blouse? Doesn't it look like I, a... Well, I, I think I'm kind of right with you. So in that way, we kind of match. I don't I know. What's going on? Like, where are my shoulders? Like, there's... It's just a very pleasant... Mother, what does he always say? Mother of the bride on Project Runway. Oh, please. Okay, Vanessa Come knows. On. Vanessa's literally laughing. Okay, you know what? Oh. Vanessa. <laughs> yes. I mean, I was, you, you need a good shoulder pad in there or something. Yes. I don't worry. I'm a man. You need, you, need floral, you need a little bit something more, more bold. There you go. What the hell? And I'll do the thank you, Vanessa. You always look right here. No one can tell, right? This looks normal. Hey, Joan Crawford. Okay, I'm mortified. Um, hey, welcome Vanessa Williams. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Oh, it's so great to see you. Um, so many things to talk about. We'll talk for a little bit, and then we're gonna talk more later. But I want to talk about Black Theater United, which just formed, which is so crazy because I said to James, it seems like something that should have been around for like a hundred years and it's just interesting that it just suddenly formed, and I'm so glad it did. So talk about what it is. Well, it, it took a tipping point. I mean, you can't watch somebody die in front of your eyes and not be nauseated and enraged and paralyzed. And after about a week of just being stunned and not knowing what to do with the anger, I got a call from uh, Audra and LaShance, and they said, listen, we, we would love to do something. We don't know what it is, but we need some founding members, and let's figure it out. And we all had a think tank uh, and there's about 15, 16 of us. And we thought about what we could do as a group uh, of professionals uh, on Broadway uh, who are of color and what, what our purpose would be as opposed to not just racism uh, within the theater, which we will get to that in one of our agendas, but also how do we talk about um, voter registration? How do we get people involved in police reform? Because all these things 
uh, needed to be addressed. So uh, Black Theater United, uh, BTU, is what we came up with. Um, and it is comprised of not only artists and, you know, singers and dancers and actors, but uh, company managers, uh, stage managers, uh, lighting uh, designers, uh, wardrobe designers, um, you know, stagehands, all people of color that have a voice uh, and that can tell their stories, but also want to direct energy to whatever our agenda is. So one of our first initiatives was um, fair count for people to be counted in the census. It is important to be able to be a part of the census so we can actually uh, have legislate, be counted for legislators to make changes. And that's kind of where it all came from. How do we make a change? So um, I'm so happy to be one of the founding members. And it's just, it's been incredible. And you know how great Audra is. She's, you know, she's like, as Will said at their wedding, she's a free train of love. Once she gets started, it's like, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's spearheaded and LaShawn's has been phenomenal. And we've got, you know, Stokes is that a normal, you know, people that I've worked with and known for, for years. So it's really nice to be able to do something with everything that's happened the past five, five weeks or so. You know, so I, I want to talk a little bit about you because I want to talk about your childhood. I have an S on. I have a podcast called Seth Rodesky's Back to School, which is all about high school. And we talked about your high school. And it's it's interesting because there were very few black people in your high school, right? Well, I, I speaking of which, I was just uh, about three weeks ago, they had a, a, um, a an emergency session with the Child Request Central School System here, which not only did I go through uh, from first to 12th grade, mm -hmm but my children also went to. Mm. And stupid racist videos came up on TikTok that went viral wow. and everybody was all in a huff because these kids were really not held accountable. So this was an opportunity for black students who had the same, you know, same journey of being the only black kid in their class. Uh, uh, many times talked about the racism that many white people didn't even realize you know, in, in Tony Chappaqua, that is such a protective bubble and, and such high excellence of education, nobody realized that we had gone through things and we might not have been vocal, but it, and now it, it holds people accountable for their their comments, their, their actions, and now people know. So the best thing out of all the chaos is that people are listening and learning and no matter what you look like, if you're a person of color, you've gone through something. And then, so was there a uh, like a, a town hall Zoom meeting with with parents yeah. and students? Yeah, it was four four hours of students wow. and parents uh, uh, talking to the school board, uh, saying it, not only were the uh, the it, I think there was a slap on the hand. I don't even know exactly what the the suspension was, if that, and it wasn't even funny it was just stupid but you know uh, I mean, yeah it was fun. uh but it, it it was so ridiculous but it caused a major brouhaha and allowed all of us to zoom in and and be heard and my biggest thing not only you know we we came here in 1964 uh, my parents were both music educators. They could uh, uh, afford their home that we that I lived in and of course rumors were around that how do they get the money and who are they? And there were covenants in, in Chappaqua for not to sell to Jews and blacks when we moved in. So that was one of the battles to get over. And then also, um, you know, in third grade, that was the first time I, get, I got called the N word on the, on the bus home. And I remember exactly who they are and I won't say their names, but I know the house and I had a brother and sister and I got home and asked my mom, I said, what is, what is nigger? And she said, what happened? She said, well, I was on the bus and these two people called me that. She said, well, um, that's, that's meant to hurt your feelings because the skin of your, your color of your skin and you're going to have to do better than everyone else just to be considered equal. And that was in third grade. So I knew then that that's what every black parent says to their child. You know, I have a black son. I have four kids, one son. And yes, yeah, still growing up in Chappaqua, I said, Devin, if you're with a whole group of kids, you're going to be the one black kid. Remember, they're going to ID you first to make sure you behave. And that's just the sad reality. Yeah. Every, you know, we had Mary Wilson on, Leslie Uggams, every single person said that exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Their their mother said the exact same thing your mother said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you sang Leslie Uggams' song, Being Good. Being good, good enough. Being good won't be good enough when I fly 
high. I must fly extra high, and I'll need special wings so far to go from so far below. Should I try? Am I strong enough? Is there time? Have I long enough? Gotta fly, and if I fall, that's the way it gotta be. There's no other way for me. Being good just won't be good enough. I'll be the best or nothing at all. <laughs> Still got it. Oh, yeah. So that was, I, I sang that song in the Miss Greater Syracuse pageant because I had done it in performance class and won and then went to Miss New York. This is back in 1983 and won Miss New York with the same song from Hallelujah Baby, and then switch it up to the old Barbara Streisand, Happy Days Are Here Again, uh, and, and won Miss America in September of 1983, 37 years ago. Wow. Yes. Vanessa, <laughs> Vanessa, did you ever meet Leslie and tell her that it was her song that you sang to? Did I ever tell? I don't think so. I don't think she knows. We have to have that meeting. She's coming back. We're having a Roots reunion. Oh my so, God. I know. We're, yes. so, we should have you a special guest star. Actually, we should. We, don't tell her. We'll do yeah, a surprise guest star. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a surprise. But I want to talk for a second because I think Vanessa wasn't a pageant girl. She was a musical theater major and just kind of did the pageant in Syracuse to make some extra money. And then suddenly, you talk about a freight train, you couldn't get off it. And suddenly, <laughs> yeah. The hell? And what was it like? I mean, talk about talk about the racism because you you were the first Black Miss America, right? Yeah, in 1983, you thought it was pretty progressive. I mean, we'd gone to the 60s, 70s, you know, I grew up in New York. So I figured, you know, it was going to be a progressive time. And uh, I was 20 years old. I won in September of 83. And, um, you know, being the first black Miss America, uh, I had white people that said, well, she's black, so she doesn't represent us. I had death threats uh, it, it, that there were so many that my parents had a red box that they uh, amassed all these threats and were in dialogue with the FBI because I was traveling all over the country every day. So they had to be aware of where the threats were. My One of my first, um, uh, I guess, parades uh, down in Mississippi, in Al it was in Alabama, um, it was supposed to be a convertible. I was supposed to sit in the back. And then at the very end, it got switched up and said, we think you need to sit in the car. And of course, I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's protection, but I didn't realize how severe the, the threats were. And um, and that was 20. And I look back at my kids, my youngest just turned 20, and I see how oh, young, they're young. They're still so young, you know? And and so thank God I didn't realize the, the, the danger that was kind of uh, following me everywhere. Um, my parents were really good about Making me aware, they said, "Be careful, keep your eyes out." But I had no idea the amount of uh, threats and the disgusting things that were sent in the mail back then. You had mail and all kinds. Of yeah, so my parents, you know, went through a lot to protect me. You know, I read your. I know you have another book coming out, but I read your first book. You have no idea which you wrote with your mom, which is amazing. But what was that sassy comment the chaperone made? Someone said, like, right when you won. Um, your no. chaperone. Hold on, no. the dog. The chaperone, yeah. Uh, she's no longer with us, but it was Marianne Mobley, who was one of the former misses coming back. And uh, once I won in the wings, uh, she said to Midge, who was one of my two chaperones, she said, Hey, Midge, you ready to go to Harlem? Which was like, Okay. A, she thought that was a dig. B, uh, do you have you ever been to Harlem before? And it's pretty damn cool. But still, I mean, you know, I get in press conferences, uh, you know, so do you live in a single family home? You know, where did you learn how to speak so well? That kind of, you know, well, you're not really black because your, your eyes are light, so it doesn't really count. You know, I mean, I was on a yeah, TV show and, and it's like, well, you know, you're, you're light skin. And the only reason why you won is because they had trick lighting and they made you look lighter than you really are. I mean, it was... You know, but that's, you get conspiracy theories, you get all kind of nut jobs and stuff, but you know, I had to weed through it and keep moving on. That is, but that's just your personality. You, you, I, that's actually what I'm curious about. Do you think Miss America taught you that or has that always been you? Because I find you very like, nothing really seems to bother you. That's what I love about you. You're just well, like, 
Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I mean, no, I, I, I feel deeply and hard and then I move through it. So, I mean, I've gone through yeah. two divorces uh, and, uh, you know, my father's death. And, you know, so I've, I've had devastating things happen to me, but uh, I take it and feel it and and move on. So I, I can't. Yeah. And so it's easy. I don't deflect it, but I, I do feel it and move on. That's kind of my, my tactic. But yeah, again, that's what I mean. you, you know, you know, if someone's opinion is if when you're a Miss America, it's almost like that's an image and I'm over here. So when all yeah. the, you know, it hit the fan and I had to uh, resign because of pictures that I had taken before without any kind of uh, release were released, you know, which took months and months of this conniving ridiculousness to have it happen uh, during my reign. Um, when all that stuff, it was so big and such a scene, I definitely felt distant. I felt like, who is that? And who's, mm. who is making all the fuss of that? Because I'm over here and they don't really know me. So it was fascinating watch, watching, you know, Ted Koppel and all these people discuss who, who I am and, and not even, you know, knowing who I am. So that, that helped really have a distance with that immense amount of, you know, hoopla. Yeah. It's, it's not that I mean you don't feel, but you don't immobilize and you don't live in the past. That's what I guess. That's what I'm so impressed by. You're very, just like you move on. It's so impressive. Um, speaking of moving on, let's look how high your hair was back in the day when you actually won. <laughs> <laughs> and the mic drop. Right? <laughs> uh, so I that on that Friday night, that Saturday night, I don't know. I was just like, let's go. I was supposed to be in London. That was my junior year abroad. So I didn't think I was going to win. I had my, you know, I had my room booked. My roommate was all ready to go. And then I had to call and say, guess what? Mm. <laughs> Ain't coming to London. I know. Your whole life, your whole life changed. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't have that musical theater. I'm an audition for opera Broadway show. Like the whole progressive, you just suddenly became a national name. It just changed everything. Yeah, it changed everything. But I thought I would get the opportunity to audition. Uh, and in the book, I, I tell about a story which um, Tommy Toon, who was wonderful, and Mike Nichols, who uh, was directing my one and only on Broadway, they had done a run, a year's run with um, Tommy Toon and Twiggy. And this is. Uh, you know, after I had resigned, moved to Manhattan and was auditioning for things. Got the call, learned all the Gershwin um, and learned the tap from from Tommy and went in to do the audition and um, everything went well. And I saw Mike and he gave me the thumbs up and, and left the theater and waited and waited. And then I heard from my agent that uh, I didn't get the part. And found out years later, um, actually at the opening night of West Side Story, which was back in 2000, I think 10. Yeah, and, a while ago. Yeah, Mike Nichols was there and he, uh, I said, hi to him, good to see you. And he said, oh God, do you remember that story? And he said, uh, yeah, I said, please tell him because I'm going to write a book and I need to know exactly what, what happened. <laughs> and he said, oh, well, after you left the, uh, so Lee Gershwin is head of the Gershwin estate, which is Ira Gershwin's widow. As soon as I left the building, Mike Nichols turned around to her and say, wasn't she terrific? Got up and went behind the stage, was walking down the stairs and there was a phone at the, at the foot of the, the stairs and the phone rang and he picked up, picked that phone and it was Lee Gershwin and she said, over my dead body, will that whore be in my show? And those are her exact words. So I said, oh, are you sure? And I, that's exactly what I have in my book because that, that's exactly what she said. And that was, a big point where I said, okay, this does not have anything to do with talent. This is going to be a slow, slow climb for me. And it was, you know, it, it, it took me a good 10 years, uh, not until 1994 to star uh, in Kiss of the Spider Woman on Broadway. So. 
but but you didn't know that at the time that story, right? You just found that out. You just years. knew you didn't get it. it was you just knew fair. you didn't get it. And I was like, um, what? You know, and I so there was. Did you suspect that Vanessa? Like, did you suspect it was something like that, or like what did you think? Uh, no, no one would. I think no one. Uh, I, I don't. I've never. Paul Martino is my agent. I don't. I don't even know whether he's still in the business anymore. But um, no, they they wouldn't have said that to me because they. It's that's pretty harsh. That's pretty. Twenty two at the time. So um, yeah, twenty two, twenty three. Wow. Yeah. But it made you realize that's why you went into recording because you kind of had to reinvent yourself. I guess. Well, I, you know, I kept going. I, you know, I was like given such crappy material to to star in and like bus and truck tours which i didn't want to go on and you know satan and eve the story about this and that and like just like crazy bad scripts and and i was doing you know uh, some guesting on on half hour comedies like he's the mayor and the red fox show and and you know um um and judging things but um i'm my my then husband at the time said, listen, if you really want control over your career, then recording will allow you to sing what you want to sing and be in control of the image that you want to portray. And mm -hmm. so I started, um, uh, my first album came out in 1988, The Right Stuff, and then Comfort Zone came out in 92, uh, 91, and the hits kept coming. And of course, people at the record company thought, oh, one hit wonder. Oh, well, then dream it. Okay, two hits, right? So <laughs> Because you do it for the second album, and then you know we got to comfort zone, and then you know save the best for last. So all of a sudden, it was like, oh, there is some longevity in here. Okay, and uh, and I I kind of got kissed the spider woman kind of backdoored because Garth Drabinsky, the producer um, who had just done Showboat, uh, and it was in Toronto, and he said, listen, I, I I'm I'm thinking of replacing Julie because. Uh, our Julie might not come to Broadway, so it'd be an opportunity for you just to start on Broadway. I was like, yes. So I said, fish gotta swim and birds gotta fly. I love a man till I die. I can't help loving the man the mine. So I sang it, and after I, I, I sang it, he said, well, I really want mm -hmm. you to kiss the spider woman. And I hadn't seen the show at the time. And uh, so I, I, I went to see it the following week and loved it. And of course, Cheetah, I mean, I I done Bye Bye Birdie for ABC TV by that time. West Side Story is my absolute favorite. You know, so she's a legend. And when I saw her, uh, I was excited, but I knew that I could do it because I had the back background with dance, and I knew I love the, I just love the mystery of it all. I love the glamour of it all, um, and it was just hot and sexy. So when I went into it. Um, it was kind of a an opening night for all three of us because they replaced not only me but Brian Stokes Mitchell came in, and uh, and also Howard McGillan. Howard McGillan. Yeah. So it was like a it was like a new company really, um, and it was really a special special show and very very hot and steamy. I mean, the the, the gyrating on that on that stage with all those sweaty men with the <laughs> no shirts on. Give me love. Give me love. Give me. Yeah. It was. It was. <laughs> Vanessa, so during that whole time when you were when your the hits were coming, was it always in the back of your mind? One day I'm going to be starring in Broadway. Always, I had been um, I had done a show called One Man Band. James Lacine wrote it and starred in it, and he really yeah. kind of gave me my first. You know, it was an off. It was on uh, uh, the South Street Theater on Forty Second Street. It's no longer there, but all those little theaters that used to be over there, yeah. and Hundred Seat Theater, and. Uh, and that gave me an opportunity to just feel like, okay, I know I can do this. Let's let's jump into it. And then from there, I moved out to California um, and looking for more opportunity. But then coming back, uh, I actually came back in 1992, right after the Rodney King riots. It's it's crazy how cyclical uh, time was. And I remember I said, I am not raising my kids in fear. And you know, things were on fire. People were being dragged out of cars. I mean, you remember that, you know, and the, and the cops were acquitted and then boom, you know, so it's, it's almost like reliving history nowadays that my kids are my age that I was when I came strange. And then my, my parents were my age when they moved, you know, in the civil rights era, I was, you know, uh, they moved in 64. Kennedy had just been assassinated. My brother was born in 67. Martin Luther King was assassinated. So it's crazy how 
as a parent, you can be fearful of, oh my God, how am I going to have this child have a safe life in this world? But it always works out. Well, speaking Positive. of speaking of civil rights, I think that's a good segue yeah. to bring in our very special guest from Yay. NAACP Legal Defense Fund, Janae Nelson. Janae Nelson. Hey, Janae. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I can't tell you what an honor it is to be on the same screen as you. I remember when you won in 1983 and how that just opened up so many possibilities for young black girls like me. So it's an honor. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, great. Janae, what's your specific position with LDF? I'm the Associate Director Counsel. So I'm effectively the number two at the organization. Uh, an 80 year old organization that was founded in 1940 by Thurgood Marshall, uh, who as all of you know, eventually after being with the Legal Defense Fund for about 25 years, went on to become the first African-American Supreme Court justice. And uh, Legal Defense Fund is really a storied legacy civil and human rights law organization that I'm very privileged to lead along with our president and director of counsel, Cheryl and Eiffel. And I want to bring greetings from our entire staff and our gratitude to you, Seth and James, for lifting us up, being one of the very earliest voices to lift up the Legal Defense Fund as one of the trusted sources in this fight. It's so nice of you to say thank you. Well, I would love to know, because people are donating, as you see, naacpldf.org slash stars in the house. When people are donating, can you tell people what the money is specifically going to, what kind of cool projects you have? Absolutely. So the Legal Defense Fund has worked on a variety of transformative cases throughout our 80-year history. We are the ones who ended white primaries in Texas. We are the ones who ended state-sponsored segregation through the seminal case Brown versus Board of Education. Wow. We ended racially restrictive covenants, which Vanessa mentioned early on, helped you know to prevent African Americans from integrating white communities. Uh, we were one of the only organizations to ever secure a moratorium on the death penalty for five years. Mm -hmm. And we carry that legacy forward today by protecting voting rights, ensuring that people are counted in the census, by uh, still fighting for criminal justice reform, including sentencing reform, still fighting to change uh, the circumstances of the death penalty and the racial disparities connected to it and every other part of our criminal justice system. And we still have an enormous education docket. We have the largest desegregation docket outside of the Department of Justice stemming from our work in, in the 1960s and 70s. And we now use that docket to seek education equity today for children in K through 12 um, grades and, and also even in higher education. So our work goes, goes on and on. And we also do a lot of economic justice work as well. You know, by the way, speaking of the death penalty, yeah, it's so horrific, the death penalty. And I was just reading today in the Daily News, a man that was locked up for literally 25 years just got released. I mean, it's just, it's shock. I love the work you're doing. And I'm putting you on the spot. Do you have any specific story you can say? I remember this one thing we fought against and it was amazing that we won. Anything in particular? Yeah, I actually have a, a personal story. Um, I, I spent most of my career doing voting rights work, um, but I was always interested in criminal justice. And as a junior attorney at LDF, I was actually there. I went into academia and then I came back to help lead the organization. But when I was a junior attorney, I got put on a, a death case, a death row case um, and we were in the office, I remember, at the 11th hour when the Supreme Court finally granted uh, our motion to, to halt the execution uh, and to save this man's life. His name was Delma Banks. Um, and there were so many issues about the frailties in his case. There's no way that anyone should have ever been committed to death on the faulty and shaky facts of that case. Um, but to know that someone came that close to losing their life um, was was just an eye opener for me. You always hear about those stories, but to be part of that type of work is something that you never forget and really transforms you personally. Wow, you're doing such amazing stuff. So everyone sees where to donate. Now, what's going on right now? You know, Vanessa formed this amazing organization. What's what's it been like for you for the last month? Because basically, you guys have been MIA with us because I just know you've been working all day. It's like what's going on the last couple of weeks. 
Yeah, there have been a lot of sleepless nights. Our staff has been just remarkable in how they have stepped up and responded to this moment. As you know, we were already facing an enormous crisis with the pandemic, with the, with the disparate impact that COVID-19 has on black and brown communities. So on top of our already busy docket, we layered on cases to uh, ensure that children who were going to remote learning had equal access to laptops and other technology to ensure that their education wasn't disrupted, that food service could make it into rural parts of Alabama and Louisiana, for example, uh, to make sure that people didn't lose their right to vote and could have accommodations to vote by mail. So we were litigating all these cases, sending advocacy letters, talking to elected officials, and then this policing crisis sprung up. And the good thing is we have been working on policing and transforming public safety for basically our entire history, but we really began to focus on it more acutely in 2014. So we actually were really ready for this moment. And mm -hmm. as unfortunate and tragic as the circumstances are that brought us to this, we're extremely uh, satisfied and gratified that this conversation is finally happening, that this country is finally waking up to what we have always known to be a scourge on the black community. Janae, do you think that the tide has turned? Like, the, you know, we've we've talked to quite a few people on this specific topic in the last several weeks, and it, talking to Audra last week and 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 uh, Leslie Uggams when we started on June first, it seemed like people are more positive in the in the black community. Is that an overstatement, or at least a glimmer of of <laughs> hope that wasn't there maybe a year ago or even a month ago? Yeah, I think there's more than a glimmer. I think there's a real spark, a real fire that has been lit, and not just in the black community, but you know, when if you've been out and been in part part of any protests, you see that it is truly a multicultural um, effort, yeah. and that's really important because this issue is unfortunately visited, uh, you know, disproportionately upon black Americans, but it is something that really discredits our entire justice system that we are all invested in. So it's right. important that other people be involved in this fight. And so I don't think the tide has turned yet, but I do think it's turning. And I think we cannot let up. We cannot take our foot off the gas. We have to be unrelenting in pursuing a transformation of how we think about public safety. Yeah, I, I I do think the tide is turning, and um, I just I always love when I always go like I can't do the work, so I always love someone else is doing the work for me. I love that you guys are actually doing the litigating. <laughs> I, I mean, Janae, it almost sounds like calling Legal Defense Fund is the equivalent mm -hmm. of I'm going to call my lawyer. Is that is that is that a way to put it? Like, if my kid isn't getting a laptop, like you were saying, I, I mean, is that what it, is that sort of how the process works? That if you're in the community and you see an injustice, you call Legal Defense. Fund? Like, how does it work? Yeah, that's a really great question. I mean, we certainly welcome people contacting us with the issues that they see in their community because that's one of the ways in which we learn about systemic and structural uh, racism that we can then attack. But if you think about some of the cases that I mentioned early on in terms of dismantling state-sponsored apartheid, in, in terms of ending racially restrictive covenants, what the Legal Defense Fund does best and what we've done throughout our history is attack systemic racism. We try to look for those pressure points in our society that if we push hard enough and we get enough legal reform, we can dismantle a system of oppression. So we don't really do a lot of direct services, although this, this moment calls for some of that. We are uh, 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 representing protesters. We are training people about how to protest safely. Uh, we do a lot of work with grassroots organizations to make sure that they have the resources and support that they need. So we try to keep it balanced. But what is really critical to our mission is to make sure that we really disrupt those systems that continue to oppress African-Americans and really continue to threaten the integrity of our democracy. So, so uh, before we go, is there anything that you what would you tell our viewers of how they can how they can help? Yeah. 
Well, uh, of course, they can continue to support through all of the vehicles that you mentioned. And we're so grateful for the support that we're receiving. It enables us to uh, grow our staff. It enables us to spread our work to other parts of the country. Uh, we're a national organization. We do a lot of work in the South. We do a lot of work in underserved and marginalized communities. And the more resources we have, the, the more we're able to serve those communities. But we also invite you to really join us in the fight, particularly to fight for the protection of voting rights. Uh, we have a voter a voting defender project and a prepare to vote project. And you can find out more information about it on our website, which is naacpldf.org. Uh, but, but really just continue to raise your voice on these issues, engage your elected officials about what's happening in your communities, know their numbers, put them in your phones. And when you see something you don't like, call them. And the final thing I would say is if you haven't done it already, please fill out the census. This is a yes. critical year. And if you're not counted, you don't get the allocation of resources to your community. You don't get the representation that you deserve. You don't get to be a full member, a full counted member of this society if you don't fill out the census. Right, that's the number one thing that, that's, that's on the priority list for Black exactly. Theater United, right? Exactly, exactly. All right, so, well, so well done. That's wonderful. Hold on, I'm going to take a picture for you, Janae, because I know you're <laughs> excited to be here. We'll, we'll get out, get out. Here, hold on, hold on. We're gonna, what we're going to do, Seth, is we're going to take us out, so it'll be just the two of them, and you'll take a picture. Hold on. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Did you get it? He took, yeah, of course, it to me. Like 20. Yeah. <laughs> well, please, you know, please Janae, Janae, send it. Janae's a prime example of, of we, we all talk about people are aware and, and, and awake and woke. A lot of, uh, she's so articulate. And growing up, I'm sure you heard, you speak so well. And you, some white people would think that that's a compliment for us. It's like, what did you expect us to sound like? Yes, our parents did educate us. <laughs> yes, we are articulate because that was valued in our household. So okay. it's the little things that people are now aware of, like, can I touch your hair? Mm -hmm. Do you have an afro down there? I mean, like, priest. <laughs> and I, but, but these are the things which you know that I'm talking about. That yeah. now people are like, oh, I, I realize that is kind of insensitive. Yes, it is. So it's the dialogue, it's people moving the needle forward, and we are definitely in a better place. Yes, it's opened up a whole new array of conversations. Oh, so very great. Great. <laughs> Janae, so great having you. Thank I hope you, you'll Janae. be back again. Thank you. Thank Peace you. Thank you. Take good care. Good to see you. Peace out. <laughs> and, um, Vanessa, wait, I want to go back to one thing because you're talking about the right stuff. Who did your sassy choreography for that? Because I saw a lot of like sassafras. Uh, it was one of Michael Jackson's, oh, my God. Uh, one of Michael Jackson's, um, you know, I wanted to do much more jazzy kind of stuff and it was more <laughs> pop, uh, wop stuff. Uh, one of his choreographers back in the I day. Mean, you're, you're really full funky chicken. Okay, wait, I, you, you have to watch the funky chicken. I'm upset. So God, all I see is my daughter. It's just crazy. I, I have one daughter that actually is 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 performing right now, doing a virtual concert, and uh, you know she she really kills it every time she gets up there. And I see myself and her now when I because I was twenty was I twenty four twenty five twenty five yeah twenty five yeah. What, what does your daughter go by as a performer? Like Lion Lion Babe. Yes, love it. That's the name of her. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have something fun coming up in a second, but I want to just discuss something. A certain fun day that we had. Oh. I, was, I was with Vanessa on a beautiful sunny day <laughs> in Arizona. 
Everything started out wonderfully, as you can see with our smiles. That's me, <laughs> Vanessa, and Mark. Yes. We decided to hike, what's it called, El Diablo? What the hell was it called? Is it Camelback? Is it Camelback? Camelback. Yes, it's it Camelback. In Arizona. In Arizona. Right? So we were warned at leaving the hotel, like, ooh, that's a really hard hike. And like, I'm like, um, I work out all the time. Don't worry. I was so haughty. I was like, I'll handle it. So all I know is that we began walking up and basically it was a wall. It was just a wall. So I, but, I, but how did you know to go left? I, went, I don't know. I followed people. I just went on the side where you could see that there was some kind of grip. That right side was, was literally a wall like that. It was a wall. And what happened was I couldn't stand any longer. So I fell to the ground and I had like two water bottles. They went rolling down like, like 700 feet, like hitting people behind me. And my friend Mark was dragging himself up and I was literally crawling. And Vanessa's version of helping was taking a photo with her iPhone. So if you'd like to see what it looked like from Vanessa's yes. perspective, this is, that's, I'm in the red on the floor. Mark, <laughs> That's the right side, but there's no way to help you. That was like uh -huh. there was no rope to throw. It was, but there was time to take that. And this, by the way, this is the close up, by the way. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that was so oh. tempting. Anyway, what I want to say is this so when you were doing Spider Woman, you mm. were being put in, and so was Hi Honey, so was Howard McGillan. It's our doggy. She always, <laughs> oh sweetie, comes to have Vanessa. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so you were being put in, and so was Howard McGillan, and so was um, right, Brian so Mitchell. Mitchell. But he so was, was right then. It was just Brian Mitchell. Right. Yeah. It was Brian Mitchell. Yeah. But there was a. You remember also we had um, he was a singer dancer who then sang backup for you. My friend Darius was in it. Mm -hmm. Darius. You, you worked with him a lot, haven't you? I have. We've kept in touch, and I brought him on the road with me for years. So. You know, not only does he sing back back up on some things, but he sings Love Is with me and some Stevie Wonder, and then I let him, you know, do amazing stuff. So he's he's part of the family. He's he's wonderful. Oh, he's so amazing, he's and it's always of, uh, he's part of uh, uh, the Black BTU. Mm -hmm. He's one of the founders of Black Theater United, and it's so nice to have him around. So I thought for funsies, we'd actually bring him on. Hi, Terry. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I'm living in the middle of a dream, a dream with a little bit of fantasy. Oh, yes. Thank you for many years. Are you back in the city or are you still in the country? I'm here in the city. I'm here in New York. I'm here in New York. We had to make our way back to do our taxes. Okay. <laughs> yes, good times. Good times. Good now, time. people watching, you may not realize, but Darius is literally a TV star now, at least vocally. You play um, Shy on Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, right? I'm the singing voice of Shy Baldwin on The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It was it's so weird. I was watching a clip. Oh, wait. I think, by the way, why am I echoing you? You have your sound really up? Yeah, I wonder how does how Did does you have stop? Ear, earbuds in before, Darius? Yeah, do you have earbuds in before? Oh, now mm -hmm. it's better. Now it's better. Um, but anyway, I was watching this clip, and it was so weird to see someone else. Like, I know your voice so well, and it was surreal. <laughs> I'm going to show this clip. It's Darius is not the lead singer. Darius is at the piano. Well, he's not, but Shy's at the piano. And it's bizarre to hear him doing. I mean, it is so your voice. Here, watch. It's going to flip you out, Vanessa. It's so weird. Way you're acting lately makes me down. Makes me down. You're still my baby, baby. So are you back? Oh, yeah. I'm back. And you know what's funny about that clip? You know, I was singing live. So I was on set. They, you know, we had done a pre recording of it with Sterling and Leroy doing all this spoken dialogue in the studio. And then Amy Palladino, who was uh, directing that particular episode, said, you know what? I want to do this live. Again, I, I just want to make, I don't want to have that kind of stereo pre recorded mm -hmm. sound. So they had to re rig the whole thing. The sound people set me up on the side of the stage where you couldn't see me. And literally I was singing. I did, you know, we did like at least what, six to eight takes 
you know, with Sterling and everything. Yeah. So I'm I'm actually there in the same That's right. on the shot. It sounds so great. Makes me down. It sounds Makes so me down. You <laughs> is still my baby, baby. Yeah. Oh, pretty. So wait, so Vanessa, I want to talk to you for a second about doing Spider-Man with Darius. Um, I was thinking about that number where you are. Did you enjoy doing that, being dressed as a man and being all masculine instead of being like sex potty? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I mean, it was a great dance number and uh, I, I don't have it. I've got my wall of fame right here, but uh, yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, you know, and, and Rob Marshall was back then, he was the dance. He put me in as a choreographer who's obviously gone to be a major, you know, movie director. But yeah, so he, um, he has great stories and uh, it was, the whole show was uh, phenomenal. I mean, Gimme Love, I've got my Gimme Love doll right here. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is my, let's see. Oh, oh my God. That's, That's her. her. That's her. Yeah, yeah. Her well. Yeah. Whoa. Looks it looks kind of. Huh? It looks a little like Madam, but it's also amazing. You know, from where the <laughs> Madam. It's the same uh, uh, artist that does the um, the dolls uh, on Lord and Taylor, and uh, you know when they have this crazy, beautifully done. Um, and I've got one from Into the Woods too. Let me go get it. Oh my gosh! I want a doll made of me. <laughs> I love it. You can tell that they love her. They said we're gonna make a doll of every role that you do. That's right. No, I, I got this. But this is oh. the. Which, let's see. Oh, they got the hair and everything. Wow. wow. Oh, look at those eyes. Yeah. Copy the dress. Yeah. Oh, that is so cool. I've never seen that. This is, <laughs> that's what's cool about having these shows in people's houses. You can see all this cool stuff. <laughs> Here's a clip of you guys. Darius, I don't know where you are and where you are. You're not one of the guys around here. You're in the back, right? You're, you're one of the eight in the back. I'm right? one of the eight in the back. I wasn't one of the four main dancers. My big part in where you are was the big slide across the stage, you know, when she's uh, laying across the guy's backs. But you know, oh, I, I don't know what clip I have. Here, take a look. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, oh, I left the show by then. Oh, you were yeah, gone? Yeah, the guy who slid in front of Vanessa when she's on the guy's back. That was my part. That was my part. That was my part. Yeah. But I left the show. I Vanessa had been with the show, I think, three months, three and a half months. Uh, and then I, I had left three and a half months into her run to do Carousel. Oh, oh right. Hey, Derek, you've hung out with Vanessa so much over the years. Can you tell us something about her that maybe not everybody knows? <laughs> Can I tell you something about Vanessa that she won't kill me? Um, gosh, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> what, 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 what have I cooked for you that's been unusual? Oh. What have you what for me? Cooked or baked. Oh, oh, she's a great baker. Oh, yeah. she's a great baker. Um, and what's that? What's that? I think it's like a Swedish dish that you make. You my, my blueberry, my Finnish blueberry pie. In the Finnish blueberry yeah. pie, yes. If you invite yes. me over for a barbecue, I'll bring two. If it's they, so good, and, and this is the perfect time of year to have it because it's a light, it's a light dessert. It's a light and dish. And blueberries and a little bit of vanilla, lemon, like three tablespoons of sugar. You make your own dough, press it, put in the refrigerator, make the filling. Pour it on top of the blueberries, 50 minutes at 350. It's easy. It's so mm. good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, no, I, like, I want some. Only yeah. Yeah. Yes, it, it's fantastic. And I mean, the only other thing, you know, I, I don't know that people, I mean, I think people got the sense of it in Ugly Betty, how funny Vanessa is. But Vanessa's really funny. She's just very, very, very funny. Uh, you know, it's just, I mean, you probably, 
know that James and Seth from having hyped with her. But, you know, she's just so much fun to hang out with all the time. And, you know, she's a daredevil. She doesn't, she doesn't um, you know, uh, hesitate to go on an adventure. So, you know, they're like, do you want to, do you want to, there you go. Like, I'll, you wanna I'll, show up up yeah, I'll show up at soundcheck. Anybody want to fly a plane? I'm going. Four right. o'clock. Going. Just like your story, Seth, when you were going hiking, we I had the great uh, fortune of accompanying uh, Vanessa in concert going to uh, Egypt. Wow. And it was the very first time I was in Cairo. And we met, you know, and I remember <laughs> I remember because we were in Sharm El Sheikh uh, originally. And then we were all like, well, we want to go to the pyramids. We want to go to the pyramids. And when it's like, we are not going to the pyramids. We're on a tight schedule, blah, blah, blah. She managed to work it out that we, went, that we went to the pyramids. So mommy let us all go to the pyramids. And, you know, and when we saw how big they were and, you know, climbing up through them, uh, we were all like, ooh, oh, I don't know. You know, and, and Vanessa was like, but my mother did this. So of course, our our our. I'm not going to do this. You're going to do it. You're here once in your life. You're going right, to go yeah, up yeah, you're to the top of the pyramid. So <laughs> then you literally go up and you you've got a rope that you hang on to and you get inside of the Great Pyramid. Now you can say Whoa. when you look at it, I was inside that. I climbed up to the top. And yeah. it was amazing. It was amazing. Or well, I mean, it's dark and it's claustrophobic, but it's dark and claustrophobic. but but there was something that was very. I don't know. For me, for me, I was very moved by it. You know, when you're in those old, something for me going to very old places, old structures and everything, I, I get very moved by that. So uh, it was, it was, it was great. Was How great. cool to travel the world together. By the way, Vanessa, I guess someone listened to our high school podcast. Miss Vanessa's interview about high school with Seth was the best. <laughs> so real. I need to read her book now. She spilled her own tea. That book is so great. Now, what's this new book going to be? Because that book was amazing, your first My book. My new book is called Bubble Kisses. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, a story that comes with a um, a CD. Wow. Of a little girl who's got a goldfish named, it's a goldfish there you go. named Sal. And she goes to sleep at night. And she goes on adventures with Sal and she turns into a mermaid. And of course she sings, uh, she has bubble kisses with her, with her, with her mm -hmm. fish. And she's got all kinds of mermaids. Let's see this way. There we go. All different colors and skin types and hair textures. And, um, uh, and it's a great song because it's uh, it's kind of like a 1940s. Um, I got a goldfish and her name is Sal. She's not just my friend. She's my pal. We play a lot of games together, though they're all pretend. And the other kids wonder why she's such a special friend. But she can roar like a lion, bark like a dog, scratch like a cat or jump like a frog. Come like a bird to do a hummingbird hover. But here's the reason that I really love her. She gives me bubble kisses, bubble kisses. The she swims by in the water. She never misses with the bubble kisses. And I'm so glad I got her. A bubble kisses, so delicious. Usually just for other fishes. For people's minds, such things are missing. It's bu 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 bubble kisses. So that's bubble kisses. That is so sweet. Who wrote the song? Um, I've had that song for almost 30 years. Um, a friend in California, a friend in California's mother, uh, gave it to me to, to, for a children's album. And I said, one of these days I'm going to do it. And I found an opportunity to do it when I was actually, I was, it was Sasha's freshman year orientation week. And I was putting her into, uh, her dorm room and they have all those, you know, parent gathering things. And I ran into another mother of a freshman and she said, listen, I've got um, a publishing company. Have you ever thought of writing a book? And I said, I have an idea. Wow. And I so always talk to other parents. You can always <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. Someone's already read it. Bravo. And it just came out. Oh, yeah, I love bubble kisses. Yay. What I love, it most, I, you know, it's, it's the, the girl has an Afro puff. So it's, it's an opportunity to see children of color and characters of color beautifully written uh, and illustrated in a book, which is 
perfect for for me because when I grew up, I, mm. I barely had one black doll. I mean, we're talking back in the 1960s, but times have changed, and I'm so happy that I can be part of the change. She looks like uh, Audra's daughter, Sally. She's got all yeah. the <laughs> So we, so we got this donation in from a friend of ours that I want to read because it's it's really cool for um, Legal Defense Fund. So our friend Margie sent this, and she works for Page. She's one of our executive producer volunteers with us, and she works for this company, PagerDuty. She donated five hundred dollars, which is amazing. But on top of that, PagerDuty they have like three charities, if I'm remembering correctly, that you can if you donate, they'll triple the match. Oh, and Legal wow. Defense Fund is one of them. So actually, the match ends up being fifteen hundred dollars. Yes. And she's making it in honor because someone she works with is one of Vanessa's biggest fans, oh. Matt Murphy. And she and so so he's so he's doing it in she's doing it in honor of one of Vanessa's biggest fans, Matt Murphy, and his decades of household performances of Save the Best for Last. Still oh. yearning to capture the beautiful emotion of Vanessa's performances. So there you go. $1,500 for Legal Defense Fund. Yay, bravo. Hey, Vanessa, I love it. Um, okay, so before we go, two things. Just Darius for fun. I've known Darius for so many years. We've had so many fun experiences together. We've done a lot of cruises. Vanessa, I still want to do a cruise with you. I, I know. Guess. I've done, I think, four already. We've never done one, to, we never done one together. When will that be back? When will the cruise industry be back? That's what I want to know. Girl, I know. Believe me, that's what Probably we want to know. Probably the same time when theater comes back. Yeah. <laughs> um, but by the way, just on a side note, I was lucky enough to see Darius as Jesus Christ in the revamped superstar in Atlanta. He was brilliant. They were actually in the same hotel. Ah, oh, see, still got it. Anyway, Darius, I found this fun clip. This is when we were on uh -oh. the Rosie uh -oh. <laughs> No, you <laughs> can't <laughs> <laughs> your, your your riffs are so amazing, and basically oh, you and Gavin Creel. Gavin has long, beautiful blonde hair in this, oh. but you got oh my god, it's so great! Listen how great you sound. <laughs> Melba Moore. <laughs> she watched the show. Those were amazing riffs. Oh my <laughs> God. Um, anyway, so Vanessa, Darius is going to gift us with something to close out the show. Oh. Darius. Yay. All right. Well, you know, let's make sure this all works. You know, <laughs> because, you know, I did this for the public theater and nothing happened. Uh, wow. So this is, you know, for Vanessa and all the lovely years that. I've known her, and she's something that she knows very, very well. Mm. Okay. Don't make me cry. Oh, 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 with a flower from your heart, showing you love. Don't hold back your feelings. You don't need a reason when it's straight from the heart. I've heard so many say that the days of romance are no more, and people falling in love is so old fashioned. Waiting are they the day they once let slip away? I need to fulfill their heart's desire for love's passion. Send me your love with a dozen roses. Make sure that she knows it with a flower from your heart. Show him your love. Don't hold back your feelings. You don't need a reason when it's straight from the heart. 
I know that people say two hearts beating as one is unreal. It can only happen in make-believe stories. But so blind they all must be that they cannot believe what they see. For around us are miracles of love's glory. And this is where Vanessa would walk out in a new town. Center your love when the dozen roses. You don't need a reason when it's coming from your heart. Oh, 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 oh. But all right, so Vanessa, next time we come on, we got to talk about um, Colors of the Wind. We got to talk about Into the Woods. There's a lot we have Ugly to cover Betty, next all that. Oh, my God, Desperate Housewives. Desperate Housewives. We have the husbands on after, and we got a lot to talk about. <laughs> and, Darius, there's much up here with you, starting with Marie Christine. Talk privately. Anyway, ah! thank you. <laughs> so tomorrow night is our Pride special. Friday night is Free to Be You and Me. Saturday is our Roots reunion. And then Sunday is my concert with um, Leia Salonga. That's right. right. That's right. Um, and, so everybody, buy buy Vanessa's amazing both of her books. Bubble kisses, and also I'm doing the the Capital Fourth. I'm co-hosting it with John Stamos and uh, Brian Stokes Mitchell will be on, uh, and Renee Fleming and Patty LaBelle, and I do a great. Uh, well, I, I can tell you, um, I do a great number dedicated to all the mothers who fear their sons might not come home, wow. and I do not while I'm around into somewhere. Oh. oh wow oh that's so beautiful is that going to be on july 4th on be on july 4th and you know i i i couldn't ignore what's happening in right. the united states uh, and i and they were luckily uh, i got a chance to get my way and and speak my piece so oh, oh. that's fantastic that's great and darius so any mrs mazel stuff we need to know well, you know, they just released the that promotional uh, for your consideration video, which is out there in the world now. You can catch it on YouTube or look it up on Variety.com, uh, and it's the music of Mrs. Maisel, and it's a wonderful 11-minute uh, clip of an overview of season three, and it's really featuring the great music, uh, two of uh, the original songs by um, Curtis Moore and Tom Miser. Who are brilliant and I had such a great pleasure working with them and I get to sing them and you get to see me actually sing the songs and John, I mean they did a wonderful wonderful presentation for it it's, it's very entertaining uh, so you can catch the music of the marvelous Mrs. Maisel and the albums are out uh, original music of marvelous Mrs. Maisel that it, it's out for you know so you, you can hear me sing all the stuff all the standards uh, the R&B that I sang at the end of the season. I mean, they it was just a wonderful overview uh, of that period. You're talking about the 60s a lot and and just how they uh, looked at a singer of that magnitude. He was sort of a Johnny Mathis type uh, yeah. singer and, and just what he had to do with being black and gay um, and which they do, uh, you know, uh, look at in in the season. So we should do a Mazel reunion. We should, huh? do marvelous, we should do a marvelous Miss Mazel reunion on Star. You Night. should. It would be so much fun. It would. Be I'm so gonna email fun. Amy. Yeah, yeah. She's she's a hoot. She's a hoot. <laughs> and oh, yeah. are, they they would be great. They would be great. Oh, we should definitely do it. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, I'm gonna play you guys you out. Yeah, plays out. All right. Bye, yeah. Darius. Bye, Vanessa. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Thank you today. Thank mm -hmm. you.